Welcome to this um, short presentation of our work using transponded data in offline Excel. My name is Maxime Gass, and this is joint work with my colleagues, Daniel Gracier, Guillaume Gaudron, and Thierry Foudet. So uh, first, uh, let's investigate what is transponding in offline RL. So um, when you do online RL, basically you do interventions. You have the learning agent that itself act on the system and measure the outcome of its actions. We can write this as P of R given do of A. A is the action, R is reward. So this would be a simple uh, 10 bit setting. Okay, you want to find the action that maximizes the expected reward given this causal model. If you have offline data, on the other hand, it's not the learning agent itself. Act um, on the system. So, what you measure is observations of actions and rewards. And, and this might be different from uh, measuring intervention. So, imagine that this bandit problem actually has a hidden latent state here. Yes. So, the latent state affects the reward, and your action also affects the reward. So, if you observe um, uh, another agent that acts but doesn't have access to this um, additional information. And you're fine because the causal graph looks as follows. It's the causal graph on the left. There is no confounding, and what you observe is actually the causal distribution that you want. However, if the agent that you observe has access to privileged information about the system, so we represent that with an additional arrow between S and A. Then this will create a confounding effect. And in that case, what you will measure is not anymore a uh, causal distribution. This problem is also called a uh, self-division problem in a recent uh, DeepMind paper. So what about more general RL? Say that you say that we're looking at the QN the partially observable Markov distribution. In that case, what you want is this causal model. You want the probability of, um, of reaching the next observation given past observations and past actions that you made yourself, the learning agent. So again, we have these two operators, is what you want. But if you observe trajectories in, say, an offline data set where you know nothing about the agent that took the actions, you have this observational distribution, this observed condition model, which might not be causal. <clears throat> so um, if the data that you collect is in the standard QNDP regime, meaning that the agent took its actions only based on the, the past observations and actions. So this is what we call the history. In that case, there is no confounding issue, and what you observe is the causal condition model. So if you collect data, if you collect offline data from an agent that acts based on the same information as a learning agent, then you're fine. You can, you can just do standard model-based error and you're good. If, however, the agent that you observe acts based on privileged information, this is what we call the privileged regime, then the transition that you observe might not be causal anymore. And then Cannot apply just the naive model based uh, uh, method on this data. So, when does this situation arise? Um, if you think about human demonstrations, so you collect data by observing humans interacting with the system, that might be confounding. Think about autonomous driving. So, you want to learn how to drive a car using some, some sensory inputs, say um, a camera that is placed in front of the car. And you record the actions that human drivers uh, take. In that case, the human drivers they will rely on a lot more information than just the, the camera input of your robot. They will rely on weather forecast data that they can hear things. They have a wider field of vision. So in that, in that case, it should create confounding and during the privilege. If you consider medical treatment recommendations, 
to say that you have data about uh, the patients and you want to recommend the best treatment for them. And what you can do is collect what uh, actual doctors did recommend and, and you also collect the outcome did the patient recover in the summer. In that case, again, the doctors that you observe actually, that you observe making recommendations, they might use information that's not in your system. Maybe they will rely on physical exams or on information about the patient that you don't have recorded electronically. So in that case, again, during the privilege phase. And, and you cannot use this data uh, just as is this made approach. Uh, the last case, which is interesting, is say that you observe humans playing Atari video games and you train an agent to play Atari video games. Then both have the exact same input. Your robot will rely on the pixels on the screen and the human will rely on the pixels on the screen. They have the exact same information. There is no confounding. And you can just apply model based RL uh, as this. <clears throat> so, what do you do with this offline data? I, I told you you can, do, you cannot do model based RL uh, with it. You can actually combine it with online data. So, say that you have a data set of online data that you collect uh, in the intervention regime. So, your the learning agent itself decides on the actions based on the past information. So you collect data from this causal uh, foundation model. And you also have a set of offline data. So in the privileged regime that you collect by observing an agent acting, but the agent might rely on privileged information. So we have these two uh, data sets. What you can do then is um, learn what we call an augmented UMDP model. So you will learn a model of the trajectories with a hidden state there <clears throat> that's going to mimic the PMDP hidden state. So what you learn is the initial hidden state distribution, the hidden state transition function, few trends. You will also learn the observation function, how you map from the hidden state to the observation. And you will learn a policy, and that's crucial to the method. You will learn a policy, but this policy will be um, a condition on an indicator I. It can be zero or one. When I is zero, the policy is allowed to use the hidden state Z. But when I is one, the policy is not allowed to use the hidden state Z. And use this, using this indicator variable, we will be able to, to, to fit the distribution of both regimes. When I equals zero, we fit the online data, the uh, standard regime. When I equals one, no, it's the opposite. When I equals zero, we fit the offline data. I equals one, we fit the online data, which is not allowed to use the hidden state. And this is your learning problem. It's very simple, standard uh, likelihood maximization. So we fit this model. The samples that come from the privileged regime, we, we fit them condition on I equals zero. Samples that come from this standard regime, we fit them with, with i equals one. So, um, why would that work? As you can, you can see, if you just discard the privileged data, you just um, make the data set empty, then it goes back to doing model based RL using only the online data. And this is correct. This is causally correct. Only use online data, we learn a causal model. But maybe you don't have a lot of data. So when you use privileged data in addition, this will constrain your model to be compatible with both regimes. So your model has to explain at the same time the privileged regime and the standard regime. And what this will do is that it will uh, constrain your model in the standard regime. So it will regularize your model in the standard regime. So your privilege, confounded data will act as a regularizer for your regular uh, causal transition model that you want to learn. So if you want uh, proofs uh, that this is correct and that this is actually uh, sample efficient, meaning that this regularizer will give you um, better generalization guarantees, then you can check uh, the data. 
So we will compare uh, this method against two baselines. Um, <clears throat> the first one is, what if we don't use the offline data? We just use the online data. This is causally correct. So you just keep using this equation. Um, then we compare against a naive method that would use the privileged data, but in a naive way. It's not going to consider that they might be confirming. It's just going to use all of the data. It's going to put the two data sets together and just pick a transition model on that regular transition model. So it amounts to fitting this equation as well. And then our method, augmented, uses both data sets also, but in a way that you want to distinguish uh, the two regimes, the privilege regime and the standard. And what we expect is that using this privileged data will allow you to perform better than not using this privileged data. So we would like to perform better than no ops, no observation. And um, what we suppose we'll observe is that if you do it naively, if you use this privileged data naively, it will actually degrade the performance of your agent compared to, that, compared to if you don't use the privileged data. Um, so we did experiments on small scale few entities using tables. So the, the, all the components of the few MDP augmented model that we fit, they are based on solid state tables. And it works, you can just train with regular like you maximization in this uh, small scale. And we observe um, exactly what we would expect. So in terms of model quality, um, using the, the privileged data in the correct way, converges much faster than not using the privileged data, which is the, the line. And also using this, using this privileged data naively actually hurts uh, the, the model in terms of model performance. And uh, so we have two soil problems, the tiger, PMDP soil problem, which is very small dimensional, and a small grid world, which is a little bit more complex. Um, then in terms of uh, agent performance, so we use the model, the causal model that we learned. We we'll use this one to fit uh, an agent, an aerial agent using astrophysics. And then we can evaluate, okay, how does this agent perform? And again, we see that using the privileged data in the correct way, you converge faster to the optimal policy. It's the green curve here. And um, if you use this privileged data in a naive way, it will actually hurt the, the convergence. You will need much more interventional data from the standard regime in order to overcome the confounding data. So take home message, um, reinforcement learning is a causal problem. What you want to learn is causal transition model. In the case of model-based ML, you want data that is causal. The field of causality has useful tools that can help you reason about um, transforming effects, about time data, usually from the pure MDP graph. You can directly apply uh, those tools for causality. And uh, you should be uh, you should be aware of privileged agents when you collect offline data and transforming. So as we illustrated in the in our experiments, if you use offline data naively, you can degrade the performance of a neural uh, online agent. If you use this offline data in a, in the correct way, however, you can improve the performance of an online neural agent. So it's important to pay attention to this um, potential confounding issue and to address it uh, correctly. So uh, I'll be happy to discuss. I will be physically at Merit. So please come to our posters. And uh, yeah, and I can't wait to, uh, to chat with you. Thank you.